Mike. Yeah, is there any uh, effort to tally up the number of U.S. weapons and equipment that are now under Taliban control? And is there any program to mitigate this problem through destruction or confiscating them back, taking them back? Yeah, Mike, we, I mean, we talked about this uh, before. I, I don't have an exact inventory of what uh, equipment the, that the Afghans had at their disposal that, that now uh, might be at risk. Obviously, uh, we don't want to see any, um, any weapons or systems uh, that uh, to fall into hands uh, uh, of people that that uh, that would use them in such a way to that that to uh, to harm our interests or those of our uh, our partners and allies. I mean, uh, we have a vested interest, obviously, in in, in not wanting that to happen. Um, but I don't have any policy solutions for you today uh, about uh, how we would uh, or could address that going forward. I would remind you, though, Mike, that. An awful lot of equipment, weapons, resources uh, were drawn down even in the last uh, years and months of the previous administration as President Trump decided to move down to a, a force of 2,500. So there was a lot of retrograde of things uh, up to that point. And then after the president's decision in mid-April uh, to complete this drawdown, albeit on an extended timeline, uh, a very... And we've talked about this, too. The very big part of the retrograde was uh, the disposition of weapons and equipment and systems and vehicles. Some of them were destroyed. Some of them were uh, brought uh, back home. Some of them were uh, deployed, redeployed in, into the region. And, yes, some were turned over to the Afghans. Uh, and uh, we're, we're working through right now to try to get a better sense of, of what that would look like. But I don't have any uh, specific solutions for you in terms of uh, what, what, we're, what, we're, what we can or, or will do going forward on this. Then uh, to the degree, well, I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. <laughs>